Welcome to Island Baptist Church's Christmas Eve Candlelight Sermon. Again, we appreciate you uh, coming out. And plus, I can't see your faces. It's even better. <laughs> appreciate you coming out and celebrating with us the Savior. And, and it's a privilege of our church to have you here and so many visitors from so many places. And a large part of our ministry is that and part of our purpose in being here on the island in a place where, where there is a lot of people like you uh, is, to, is to provide a place uh, for occasions like this and for any other occasion and also for our local church. And so, again, we're, we're grateful for that. Familiar with uh, the popular Christmas hymn, I heard the bells on Christmas Day. Remember that? Henry Wadsworth Longfellow wrote that. You know any of the history of that? I'm going to read you the first line and then I'm going to give you a little history lesson because uh, it's significant. I think it's significant for just for the sake of the hymn but also for the sake of us. And um, here, here's the first line. I heard the bells on Christmas Day. Their old familiar carols play. Wild and sweet, the words repeat of peace on earth, goodwill to men. Sound familiar now? Here's a little history. Uh, Henry wrote this Christmas Day, 1863. Any history buffs here can tell you 1863 was a tough year for the United States of America. We were in the middle of the Civil War. And he wrote it on Christmas Day, less than six months since the Battle of Gettysburg and of Vicksburg, where uh, tens of thousands of Americans killed each other. It's unthinkable, isn't it? That is our history. His own son, Charlie, was recovering at home from wounds he sustained in the Battle of New Hope Church. It was, uh, um, it was a sad song for him. It was when there was anything but peace, and so we can understand why, if you know the song, well, it turns a little dark for a while. So I want to read the, the first line again and then go on to the second line. Here's what it says. And, I heard the bells on Christmas Day and their old familiar carols play and wild and sweet the words repeat of peace on earth, goodwill to men. And in despair I bowed my head. There is no peace on earth, I said, for hate is strong, mocks the song of peace on earth, goodwill toward men. 150 years later, here we are with how much more peace? Now we can feel it, can't we? There's not a lot out there. Um, where is this peace that the angels promised? Peace on earth, goodwill to men. Why don't we have it? It's almost uh, reminiscent of the words of the prophet Jeremiah who says they cry, peace, peace, when there is no peace. It sounds more accurate, doesn't it? Certainly more applicable. Some wiseacre said that peace is that quiet interlude that comes while People are reloading. 5,000 years of recorded history, 15,000 wars on this planet. We're not very good at peace, y'all. We're not very good at it. And we certainly don't have it, and we certainly can't produce it, even though we've had dreams and aspirations to that effect. In fact, the dream of the past was that education of the masses would make the difference. It was the dream of communism. It was the dream of socialism. It was the dream of capitalism. You make them smarter. Make them more prosperous. They'll have no reason to fight. And of course, the most prosperous and the smartest nations that the world had seen to that date fought World War I and World War II. And then out goes the window. Through the window goes the aspirations of these systems that claim somehow that peace was through education. Uh, we're not very good at having peace. One of the craziest laws that there is seems to be the disturbing of the peace. How can you disturb something that you do not have? <laughs> peace, listen, cannot be taught, cannot be bought, cannot be educated, cannot be enforced, can only be received. See, that's our problem. It's, it's a gift and you have to accept it. A lot of Christmas gifts sitting underneath trees today, wherever you're gonna be going back to, in my home, in your home, you know, those gifts are really nothing if you don't open them. I mean, in the heart of the person that gives them, it says a lot about them, but it says a lot about you and the fact that you don't take them. So, have you opened the gift of God's peace? It's not just something that falls on us, because believe me, if God wanted it to, he would. No, he leaves it to us, so he plays the ball into our court 
And now it's our turn to play. And the play is you have to accept his terms of peace. And these words are not my words. These are the words of the Prince of Peace himself, Jesus Christ, whose birthday we're here to celebrate. Listen to what he says in the book of John 14. He says, peace I leave with you. What words? My peace I give you. I do not give you as the world gives. Do not be, let your hearts be troubled. Do not be afraid. Not as the world gives, right? Again, how can the world give something that it does not have? But the Prince of Peace has it. You think about the stories that we can recall, if you're familiar with anything on the scriptures, you can recall some beautiful stories. For instance, the, the, the storm on the waters, uh, the disciples who mostly were fishermen and been, been living on those waters, they all thought they were going to drown. The same storm that, that, that drove them crazy was the same storm that put him to sleep. What has he got going on, you see? An incredible peace, an unexplainable peace. 5,000 miles, how many miles are you going to be feeding tonight? 5,000 miles Jesus had to feed on one occasion with no anxiety whatsoever. So six or eight extra people show up tonight at your house, is that going to be rough for you? We stress over so many small things. Jesus, who is not just giving of peace, but who is the prince of peace, and those who come to him and receive the gift of peace have, have the kind of reactions like a, like a person like Peter, who, who before was pretty tempestuous, who, who after receiving God's gift of peace through his son Jesus Christ, turned into a person like this. It was the night of his execution. He's laying in a jail in Jerusalem. God sends an angel to rescue him. Remember the story of the book of Acts. Remember what the angel had to do to wake him up? Had to kick him in the side. So you're being killed in the morning, and you sleep like that? How many of us are having difficult sleeping for a lot less reasons? The prince of peace, you see, had given him peace. Isn't that kind of peace appealing to you? It is to me. Again, in order to have this peace, you have to accept his offer of peace. And the Bible states plainly and emphatically, listen, that a person who does not accept God's terms of peace is an enemy of his. How dumb do you have to be to be an enemy of God? But listen to what the words say. Colossians 1, verse 20. Once, he says, you were alienated and hostile in your minds because of your evil actions. Our sins have separated us from God. I hope you've heard that before. It's such an important message. Our sins have separated us from God. It's not because God doesn't know where we are and not because God can't reach us, but because our sins have turned him from us. And there's a separation. There's a wall. In fact, there's an alienation and an and and and, and, and enmity that is caused because of our sin. We have to understand that. You have to understand God's terms. He says we're enemies of his because of the sins that we've committed. Once you were alienated and hostile in your minds because of the evil actions, but now Jesus has reconciled you. See, there's his terms of peace it's through his son Jesus, whose birthday we're here to celebrate. Because now Jesus has reconciled you by his physical body through his death to present you holy, faultless, blameless before him. God's terms of peace. But a person who will not accept God's terms of peace through his son Jesus Christ will never be at peace. So you're not at peace with God. How are you going to be at peace anywhere else? You see, that is our problem. There is no peace on earth, I said, Henry said. Henry Longfellow. Why? Because no acceptance of God's terms. Trying to make our own. Trying to work our own way. Trying to go with our own brains, our own ability, our own know-how, our own terms of peace, and there aren't any. We don't have it. Can't give it because we don't have it. Only comes through God's son, Jesus his terms of peace are his son. He who has the son has the life. He who does not have the son of God does not have the life. Scripture is really clear. God has given us eternal life, and this life is in his son. He who has the son has the life. He who does not have the son of God does not have the life. We're certainly to celebrate a baby that was born, God becoming flesh and dwelling among us, permanently joining himself to that which he's created, this celebration of an incredible thing what an incredible event certainly worth celebrating but that same baby did not stay a baby he grew to be a man took on a complete physical attributes in every way as any person sitting in this room so that that body that he had as it's already said could be the terms of peace our sin deserved death 
Our sin, the, the cross in the middle, as they say, was a cross we should have been hung on, but no, it was his cross. He took it for us. He paid for our sins, and the terms of peace are simply this, to accept what he has done for you as your reconciliation to God. Are you willing to accept that terms of peace? That's what we're here to talk about. That's what it's all about. You can't have peace without the prince. You can't have peace without the prince. I'm going to ask you if you would, bow your heads and close your eyes with me, and I want us just to contemplate for a moment. And I want you to listen there with your heads bowed and your eyes closed. And I just want you to ask, ask a very serious and personal question, and a question that I want you to answer clearly only to yourself. Jesus is the Savior. He's the Prince of Peace. But is he your Savior? Is he your Prince? Have you turned your life over to him? Have you trusted him? There is no peace on earth because we try to create our own peace. There is no peace in our lives because we try to create our own peace. Only the Prince of Peace can give us that. It's a gift that God has freely given to us. It's a gift. But you have to unwrap it. You have to receive it. Will you receive that gift today? Would you say yes to God today? Yes to his son, Jesus. Here on his birthday, what a, what a great time to make things right with God. God, I thank you that I thank you for rescuing us. I thank you for sending us a Savior, the only Savior. We could not save ourselves. We read this spectacular story, very simple story, of you taking on flesh yourself, becoming one of us, so that ultimately you could die to take our place and pay for the sin so that we can be reconciled, so that the enmity could be canceled, that we could be right with you, you offer us this gift of eternal life, of forgiveness of sins. God, I pray that there would be nothing in our hearts or minds that would keep us from accepting that gift tonight. Thank you for the blessing we have to worship you, to honor you. Thank you for, um, since you've given us such great things, how, how will you hold anything else back from us? Help us to understand how great that love is that you have for us tonight. Thank you for the blessing again of being able to minister together, worship together from so many different places and backgrounds. But one, because you have made us one, Lord, you have removed the wall of enmity and created peace. We trust you tonight. We trust your presence and working tonight. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks for visiting. Find us at www.islandbaptist.org.